is Craig, and joining me today is Callum. Hello, everybody. Hello, Callum. And right now, our first one on the list is the U.S. Navy EOD. So, Callum, tell us a bit about the EOD. Uh, United States Navy Explosive Ordnance Disposal Technicians render safe all types of ordnance. So that's everything from IEDs, uh, enemy munitions left on the battlefield, and chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear weapons that could be used. They're attached to a lot of special operations forces as well as all other branches of the United States military when overseas. They are jump airborne and dive qualified as well. Yeah, they sound like an exciting group, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, you got balls of steel to be in this lot. Exactly, yeah. Alright, so shall we move on and show them how to make this wonderful uniform? Exactly. Hey guys, as promised, we're here going to show you how to do the first uniform on the list, which is the US Navy EOD. Column, do you want to take us through your little baby here? Okay, so on the clothes menu, I'm going to work through the top first. So we're going to go with a commando shirt, or you can use a uh, cry precision top as well in AOR1 or AOR2, those specific United States Navy camouflages. So that's the reason I chose them for that one. Uh, vest, I'm going with uh, IBA in Coyote Brown. Mm -hmm. Pants can be cry again in AOR1 or AOR2, but for this one, uh, we decided to go with Cargo Bravos because they've got the knee pads on there and uh, it's more of a generic look than, say, maybe one attached to a JSOC unit. Exactly. Footwear, we've got hiking shoes because they're very close to uh, Solomon boots, which are pretty much one of the go-to boots used by a lot of uh, Sneaky Beaky special types. <laughs> uh, onto accessories now. We've got Oakley SI Ballistic M frames in any color as long as they've got clear lenses or smoke lenses if you want it up to you. But you know, if you're going to be overseas in a high threat EO, sorry, IED environment, you're going to want some eye protection with you. Face wear, nothing. Uh, headwear, we've got ACH helmet in olive drab because you know when you lose the helmet cover apparently in the military now that makes you a, a special kind of guy uh, <laughs> headset is alpha in olive drab as well because it's close to the peltor headsets that are on issue in the mi US military these days I believe they're peltor sure I'm not too, not too sure um, gloves uh, this is where you can go wild I went with Oakley's because they're my favorite but you know you can use the uh, fingerless Kevlar gloves because if you want to RP a bit more, you can have the dexterity for you know touching IEDs and rendering them safe. Uh, backpacks, I went for a Camelback because if again we're RPing this, this uh, EOD guy's going to be in a hot area. He's going to want some water. And uh, that is it. That's it. It's a pretty great build. It's quite nice. The US Navy EOD sounds like an awesome unit. So I'm just going to look into them a bit more now tonight. But anyway, thank you very much. And we're moving on to the next one now in a moment. As promised, there's the next uniform. We are now doing Russian FSB. So, Colin, give us a bit of info about these guys. Okay, Spetsgroup Alpha, also known as Alpha Group in Russian, are the counterterrorism unit of the FSB, which is the Federal Security Service. Uh, these guys uh, operate in places like Chechnya, Dagestan, uh, suppressing all type of uh, terrorist activities in Russia. And if you look at their training, it's absolutely bloody mental. It is mental. These kind of guys that do backflips and throw axes at targets for some reason. I always wanted to ask Yeah, someone. the Russians, Rus Russians got a thing about killing people within trenches. Oh, well, you know. They're an old faithful for almost every army then. Yeah. All right. Right. With that out of the way, we're going to go move on to the uniform and let you know how to make it. All right, as promised, we're going to show you how to make this uniform. So we're going to go in from top to bottom and then all the accessory bits as well. Of course, just a bit of information right now. You may be wondering why they're wearing, like, you know, cry combat stuff. The last five, ten years, they've actually been reverse engineering and redesigning most of their military equipment to match Western equipment as well. And, of course, this entire uniform is in ATAX FG. So let's have a look through real quickly. The top is a cry combat shirt in ATAX FG. The vest is a TAC Tech plate carrier in ATAX FG. Uh, we also have Cry. Sorry about that, a little bit tongue twister there. Uh, we also have the Cry Precision Combat uh, Pants, which are in ATAX FG. There's a team going on here. 
the footwear we're, that we're using right now is the commando but callum do you know any good uh if you don't have the commando pack do you know any good boots to use with this one as well uh when in doubt go uh either hiking boots in maybe black or just generic combat boots really yes exactly so moving on to the accessories parts right now they have no eyewear on uh the face wear is an artillery balaclava which everyone does have, by the way, you, if you've updated the Ghost War and stuff like that, you do have the artillery uh, balaclava there, access and free and ready to use in forest green. We also are using the fast ballistic helmet in ATAX FG. We are also using no headset, just the earpiece. Uh, the gloves I went for are Oakley Pilot, but what would be a good recommendation if you don't want to use Oakley Pilot gloves? Uh, fingerless Kevlar or just generic Kevlar gloves, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. So you have three choices there on gloves anyway. The backpack that we chose was the Rush 24 or the 511 Rush 24 in ATAX FG. So yeah, folks, that's pretty much sums up the Russian FSB. And we're moving on to the next uniform now in a moment. All right, guys. So for the next uniform, we have the Canadian Special Operations Regiment, and because Canada is bilingual, it's the Regiment d'Operation Spéciale du Canada. It's uh, pretty much exactly the same type of unit as the Special Forces Support Group. They provide uh, support to Tier One units like Canada's Joint Task Force Two, as well as having uh, special operations uh, capabilities themselves. Uh, if you just give us two seconds, we're going to move on to the uniform and teach you how to build this one. I promise we're on the next uniform. Callum, please walk us through this wonderful uniform. Okay, so, right guys, it's cry or die time again. So, cry top, cry bottoms in Cadpat TW, or you can also have uh, Cadpat Arid, depending on if you're uh, role playing in a woodland or a desert environment. Because this is a tier one unit, they can kind of call up Cry Precision and say, hey, we want some CAD pack Cry Kit. Uh, 511 Tactic Plate Carrier in Coyote Brown. Uh, we're going to go with either hiking shoes or commando boots, or maybe just combat boots, up to you. Accessories. Because we're sort of RPing that these guys are going to be working a lot with the 427th Special Operations Aviation Squadron, uh, which is uh, a Canadian sort of helicopter unit in their Griffin helicopters so we're going to give them goggles to stop that uh, for that FOD going in their eyes so ESS goggles in Coyote Brown a one hole balaclava in Coyote Brown again carbon high cut helmet or fast ballistic helmet in Coyote Brown see there's a theme going on here guys and we're going to go with Head Deck Charlie in Olive Drab gloves can be Oakley Pilot or Nomex in a neutral or sandstone and we've gone with a Y strap pack in a coyote TW or we can have a coyote wrong a cat pat TW or cat pat AR again dependent on where you role play in the area uh, weapon wise we went with the M4A1 because it's similar to uh, Canada's DeMarco CASF W that's exactly right all right thank you very much for watching this one and we'll move on to the next one now in one moment Guys, welcome to the next uniform, and on our list right now we have from the Russian Federation, which is the first special purpose unit of the internal forces known as Vyats. The first uh, purpose special unit of the internal forces are known as counter-terrorism kind of types. They also deal with anti-gang as well, and they kind of sport very interesting looking gear in base colors. Quite enjoying the look of this one, and we'll now in a moment we'll show you how to make this awesome uniform. So we'll see you now in one moment. promised we're going to show you how to make the uniform we're going to go from top to bottom right now we used in this one because we don't have kind of like the gorka uh suits that they would wear so we're kind of matching up equipment and stuff like that we could have went with cry or die but i kind of like the jacket a bit more great suggestion by callum because i was going to do another cry or die uh outfit <laughs> pretty much again but you know i went with his good judgment so looking at the jacket we have the jacket in sandstone we have an iba in ATAX FG because we don't have that real Russian camouflage. Do you know the name of that actual camouflage that they used? It looks I like woodland. I believe it's Flora. Flora camo. Yeah, we don't have the Flora, Flora camo in game. Too sure. Well, we'll say Flora now. If anyone knows in the bottom, uh, you know, down in the comment section, give us a heads up about it. 
We also are going to use the, the 511 Tactical Bees uh, in Sandstone once again. No, sorry, Coyote Brown. It's kind of a mix match of colors, different shadings and stuff like that, because the Gorka suits come in different colors, but the ones that he wore had like a Coyote Brown and a Sandstone look to them. So we kind of matched up the colors. Of course, they use basically you can use combat boots, hiking shoes, work boots. It really depends on what you want and what you like on your uh, feet. But I went with a classic combat boot. Now, going into the accessories, they wear no eyewear. Depending on their role, we're kind of doing a light roll on this. So no eyewear on this. They're going to be a quick response unit. Their face wear is a one-hole balaclava in black. Their headset, I'm sorry, the no headwear on this one. Once again, it is a light roll, but you can mix and match equipment. But we don't have too much Russian equipment in game, so we're not going to try it too hard on that. We also have, oh, apologies about that. We have headset C as our chosen one. I've seen a lot of Russian uh, special operative units use these in photos and stuff like that and references. So we went with a classic and we made it in black, of course. It depends on you in general. If you want to ma mix and match equipment, go for it. I've seen in most photos of the MVD that they don't actually wear gloves in most of their stuff. They're kind of a hardcore unit. I've seen these guys run around in snow and stuff like that, watching a few documentaries about them. But without gloves and stuff like that. So basically, interesting look. You can wear gloves or not. If I would suggest, go for a good old Kevlar glove in black. Or even go for the Nomex gloves. Just to mix and match your gear, of course, once again. The backpack we went for this time around is the Camelback in County Brown. And that is pretty much it for this Russian Federation unit.